The graph shows how electric current through a conducting liquid varies with potential difference across it. So this is our IV curve. And they ask us, at which point on the graph does the liquid have the smallest resistance? Smallest resistance. How does resistance relate to I and V again? Huh? So remember, Ohm's law, V equals IR. This may not be a ohmic conductor, so we're not going to call it Ohm's law. We're just going to call it VIR ratio. So resistance here is the ratio of V over I, which is a ratio, and this has to be the smallest. Ratio smallest, okay? Now your first impression might be to think of, oh, miss, we can just draw in our uh, tangent to that point, find the gradient of the curve at those points, and just see which one is the smallest or the largest. So maybe you might choose B or D, but let me tell you, if you chose D, for example, or if you chose B and say, Miss, look, it's so steep. Both of these answers are wrong. Because what we just draw here, for example, at C, is a gradient of the curve. Or rather, gradient of curve at C. Tangent to the curve at C. So this ratio that we look at R equals V over I is actually not the gradient of curve. There are two different things because this is not a straight line. Okay. For curves, ratio V over I is not the same as dV dI or not the same as delta V delta I. So you cannot, we, we cannot treat them like gradients or tangents anymore. Okay, so let's see. How do we find it then? If you know we cannot find tangent. You see, the thing of ratio V over I have to be the smallest. Means What that means in, in English is that V has to be quite small compared to I. So you compare all the points and you kind of see, well, miss, this one got a certain amount of V. This one got a certain height of I. Find a ratio of that and then compare with this one and this one. Compare with this one and this one. And compare with this one. Wow, very big V, ah. Mm, the I not so big. But there's one problem with using this method. We don't have values. We have to eyeball and make a guess. Which V is quite small compared to the I? Mm, doesn't look like D because D, look at the V. So big, but the I is so small. So not D, A, D. A, B, C, how do we know? So this method... It works well if you have values, but we don't. So let's look at the fourth set or third method. How to for sure know which one is the answer. So this method involves drawing some lines. So from origin, draw to, let's say, A. What I just drew here is not the gradient of the curve. It's another name for it, but we won't go into that. But this one is length V and length i. So when you try to find this gradient of this line that we just draw, gradient of line, ah, y over x. So this one will be i over v. Hey, that's very similar to v over i on the right side. So I think we need to rearrange a bit. So if the ratio v over i have to be the smallest, that's what they're asking us, that means the ratio 1 over, which is I over V. I just flipped both sides. This one has to be the largest. And where do we have 1 over V? Uh, 1 over V. I over V is this one here. So the gradient of line I over V has to be largest. So largest where? Gradient of the line, uh, that line that we draw. So we're going to draw also for B. And also for C. And lastly, D. Okay, so from this, we can very clearly see which one has the largest gradient, which line has the largest gradient. And that will be C. So this one, largest. Hence, we choose C. So remember once again, these lines we draw is not the gradient of the curve. It's the gradient of these lines that we draw from origin to that point. And that really is what we call the ratio of V over I at each point with respect to origin, of course. All right, so that's all for this question.
be careful when you see curves like this uh, when thinking about resistance. Alright, that's all for this video. See you in the next one.